So let's look at the uh, extreme cloud wireless access points or the access points uh, supported by the solution. So the reason why we focus on wireless first is because wireless is the most dynamic network environment uh, when you compare it to the uh, wired edge, or wired access, distribution and core. So there's a lot going on in wireless and it was the first type of deployment that was able to leverage the benefits of uh, cloud-based uh, network management. So the platforms natively supported by the Extreme Cloud uh, Wireless are uh, AP122 or 122X, X being there to mark the availability of external antennas, so you can connect external antennas uh, to this AP. And the AP122 is the entry-level access point uh, best used for K-12 schools, uh, environments with uh, low to maybe mid density and not very demanding applications, so no real-time applications going on. It's a dual radio 802.11ac wave 1 AP with a 2x2 two two, uh, or two 2x2 two two, uh, radios in there. Then we have AP-130 and AP-230, which are the more enterprise um, type of APs. Uh, AP-130 and AP-122 actually being right there in terms of performance um, and the AP-230 giving support to voice over Wi-Fi, so it has a voice over Wi-Fi certification. It's more appropriate for real-time traffic and actually all the access points from here on uh, all the way up to AP-550 are going to be uh, suitable for real-time traffic and the AP-230 provides a 3 by 3 for free uh, radios. The AP245X is, again, X means external antenna connectors. It's very popular in warehouse scenarios uh, because you can connect directional antennas to it. Um, it has a free by free radio capabilities and it's a dual radio AC wave 2. The AP250 is the first access point with software selectable radios or what we say dual 5 gigahertz radios, uh, which means one radio is a fixed 5 gigahertz radio and one of the radios can be either 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. And we'll talk about why that's important and how you can use that in higher or high density networks um, in the course itself. And then we have AP550, which is the uh, 4x4 through 4, again, software selectable, dual 5 gigahertz radio, uh, top of the range for the indoor devices. Uh, and finally, the outdoor alternative, which is the AP1130. Uh, 2 by 2 through 2. Now, the reason why we have a 2 by 2 through 2 in here is um, a lot of the customers ask, you know, why isn't it a 3 by 3 or a 4 by 4? The truth is, if you want to leverage MIMO, if you want to leverage 3 by 3, or if you want to have free or 4 spatial stream communication, you need a lot of multipath. You need a lot of reflected signals. In an outdoor scenario, there's not a lot of reflected signals, signals because you know, the signal actually travels, you know, pretty much in a straight line and there's some reflection from the buildings and then there's going to be foliage uh, that's going to be absorbing the signal. So there's not enough multipath to be able to achieve those uh, high spatial streams. Usually you can go up to two. So there's no reason why you would have a two, uh, a higher, uh, higher radio chain ratio than two, two by two. Uh, that's why we have a two by two radio in there. In terms of Security. All the platforms come with a TPM security chip. What that means is if somebody rips the and steals the access point from your environment and opens up the box uh, and somehow gains physical access to the chips that store the data on it, they won't be able to read anything because it's encrypted. The only way to get to that data is either through the cloud or by logging into the console or SSHing into the, into the device, uh, which that person won't be able to do because they don't have the credentials to do it. Uh, so the data is safely secured, stored on that uh, device. And that data being things like configuration and more importantly, usernames and passwords. In terms of power, um, most of the platforms can actually be powered by standard PoE, which is good uh, when you have an existing switching infrastructure in place that may not support PoE plus yet. So you don't have to do a forklift upgrade of all your switches. You can use whatever you have and then upgrade later. The platform that does require the PoE Plus 
are AP550 and AP1130. And optionally, you need PoE plus on AP245X and AP550. And the reason for that is if you want to use two, giga, two giga, gigabit Ethernet interfaces and the USB uh, port. Those ports, so an additional gigabit Ethernet port and the USB port will be turned off if you have a standard PoE and not PoE plus. But you don't lose anything in terms of radio capabilities. Um, Another thing about AP122, it's non-plenum rated, which means you cannot deploy it above the ceiling. It needs to be below the ceiling, so it, it's not plenum rated, uh, well, whereas the other platforms are. And a lot of the APs have a built-in BLE radio, and the importance of the BLE radio is it can serve either in monitor mode or in the beacon mode. So it replaces an active beacon, or you can use that platform to monitor other beacons, other BLE beacons in your environment. Uh, and more on that later when we talk about integrations and when we talk about uh, how you can leverage the data uh, from the system to solve your business problems. So we've looked at the legacy portfolio. Uh, let's look at some solution-specific type of access points, type of devices. Um, so they were developed with a very specific solution in mind. The first one is Atom or AP30. It was the industry's first pluggable enterprise AP and what makes it different is um, the idea is you plug it into a power socket, the AP will automatically mesh with your environment and provide you with network access and more importantly sensor capabilities. So it the important thing to know here, it's not a Wi-Fi extender. It's a full-blown enterprise-grade mesh access point uh, running the same peripherals as some of our other platforms and running the exact same software. So it's not a Wi-Fi extender. And the goal of these AP is, so there's three solutions uh, that we wanted to support by this access point. The first one is coverage at the edge. So say you have conference rooms or uh, areas at the edge of your network that don't have coverage and they also don't have any Ethernet cabling. And how do you extend wireless to that? Well, plug in a couple of atoms. Uh, they will provide the connectivity, they will, they will provide the visibility and they will provide all the security solutions that you know, we have on all of our other platforms uh, to those parts of the network. The other two are more sensor based. The first one being you can use it as a wireless intrusion prevention and detection system as an overlay. The benefit of using the Atom is it consumes one device will consume one third of a license which means you can run free Atoms for one license uh, in the Extreme Cloud IQ whereas all the other devices will consume a single license. So with Atom you can have free. This makes it a very affordable and easy to deploy overlay for uh, wireless intrusion prevention and detection system or alternatively you can use it for a location detection system again as an overlay and not only does it work with ex other extreme cloud APs you can actually put it into client mode and connect to other APs as well so you could use it as an overlay on a non-extreme network and then start uh, deploying the benefits of the cloud that way in terms of the access point itself, it has the full enterprise software feature set, layer 7 firewall, application visibility control, QoS, uh, it can even do VPN. Uh, it has an automatic instant mesh capability, so when you put it out of the box, if you're already running an extreme cloud wireless network, it will automatically mesh to your environment. All you have to do is put in that serial number into the cloud. And it, it provides seamless integration for uh, things like IoT devices because it has a BLE radio in there as well. So it's a very versatile little device. The second solution specific platform is the AP150W uh, or what we call it wall plate AP. The AP150W is an 802.11ac wave 2 3 by 3 through 3 access point. So it has a quite capable radios in there. It has a built-in BLE radio but it also has a four switch ports at the back and one of the ports can also be used as a PoE pass-through port. So you can patch it in back to your switch and use it as a, as a, as a switch board. The use case for the AP150 is for multiple dwelling units where you want to connect uh, multiple things in that apartment or that room. Um, Wi-Fi clients but also wired clients like printers, uh, 
things like PlayStations and gaming consoles uh, and other wire devices that you might have. And the other use case would be hospitality or hotels, um, where in a hotel room, again, this would be the single device connecting everything from the uh, customer's Wi-Fi devices that they would bring with them to the devices in the room, like voice over IP phone, uh, smart uh, TV or IP-based TV, and other wired devices that you might have in that room. So it's a vertical or solution-specific uh, type of a device. So let's look at the Wi-Fi 6 or 8211AX enabled APs. And obviously for anybody that wants to future-proof their system, these will be the go-to platforms uh, when they want to deploy a new or greenfield type of uh, Wi-Fi environment. The first AP is the AP510C, C uh, being uh, standing there for cloud. And it's a dual band internal antenna 802.11AX uh, AP with 4x4 or two 4x4 radios actually, and it has a dual 5 gigahertz or software selectable radio capability. So basically you have potentially two 5 gigahertz 4x4 radios in there, or one 5 gigahertz 4x4 and one 2.4 uh, gigahertz with a 4x4 uh, radio in there. It has a BLE radio in there as well, you have a USB port, it can be powered by PoE Plus, so this, this platform needs PoE Plus because 802.11AX is uh, more demanding in terms of power and or you can run it through a DC power adapter which is again not something you want to do in a regular deployment because uh, the power adapter uh, introduces another point of failure into your deployment you want to use that PoE plus uh, and connect it to a switch and then you have the AP510CX X being there for external antennas uh, a similar platform dual 5 gigahertz software selectable radios two 4x4 radios in there. Um, both access points actually have a multi-gig port as well. So we have a 2.5 gigabit port on there. Uh, this one also has BLE. Uh, and the important thing is it has extended temperature range. So it can be deployed in warehouses uh, or in NEMA enclosures uh, for more demanding environments. And it has an outdoor mode. Now, the outdoor mode doesn't mean it can be deployed outdoors. Uh, it's not weatherproof, it's not waterproof. But it does mean uh, it leverages one of the things 802.11x brings, which is improvements for the outdoor signal propagation. Uh, so the, this access point can be used outdoors, but make sure you use it together with a NEMA enclosure uh, and connect the antennas to that if you're deploying it outdoors. Don't deploy it directly uh, out in the rain or out in the snow. Uh, that will not end up well. And we're just introducing the third option, which is the AP305C, uh, which is going to be a more affordable, uh, lower powered 802.11AX access point with a 3x3 for free radios. So just a quick summary of why dual 5 gigahertz or software selectable, or what we call software defined radios are important. The way we design networks today has gone from coverage based to more uh, density-based or capacity-based type of deployment. So we're not necessarily concerned just with the coverage. We, we don't want to cover as much area as possible with a single AP, and that's how we used to deploy networks 10, 15 years ago. Today, we're talking about user capacity. And when we talk about user capacity, there's two things that come into play. One is the 5 gigahertz spectrum offers more non-overlapping channels and reduces something we call co-channel interference. So the 5 gigahertz spectrum itself is better for high capacity deployments. And the second thing is, um, if you're obviously, if you're deploying for 5 gigahertz, then what do you do with that 2.4 radio? Um, sometimes you turn it off, sometimes it's just causing additional interference in there. So when you're purchasing a dual band AP, that 2.4 radio is actually a waste of money. So what we've decided to do is turn that radio into a software selectable radio. It can either run 2.4 if that's something that you need, or it can run in 5 gigahertz, giving you the uh, flexibility and giving you the capacity of 5 gigahertz uh, spectrum. The AP will then serve uh, two different basic service sets and those will both work on 5 gigahertz on two non-overlapping 5 gigahertz channels doubling the capacity 
uh, and also protecting your investment because typically you'd have to buy two access points to provide this to uh, 5 gigahertz BSSs. Here, all is done in a single AP connected to a single switch port, consuming a single switch port and powered by that same PoE uh, source. So it's a very flexible type of deployment and it protects your investment. The access points that currently support the dual 5 gigahertz mode are the AP250, the AP550, and then 510C and 510CX. So those are dual 5 gigahertz platforms uh, and they all offer all the benefits of, of running a dual 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network.